Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the NHL slate for this evening. And it's a pretty big night for the NHL as far as DFS goes, because they are offering 100,000 for first um, in the 360, which they don't do too often. Um, they allow 27 entries as usual. We're just going to do one. That's just uh, the way I like to play. And we also are going to play the kick save, but they are offering 50,000 for first in that one guaranteed. So what we're going to do is we are going to go through just the overall landscape of the slate from a team total perspective. And we're going to look at my sheets and see who looks good. Then we're going to build our initial kind of hand-built lineup based on that. Then we're going to have Saberson come in and help with the uh, MME stuff. Now, again, it's early. There's going to be a lot of changes. But again, this, these are usual process videos. So uh, hopefully um, you guys will learn how to build your own as opposed to just, you know, seeing who I like and who, who I'm playing. Because um, I'm just using the same tools that are available to you guys. Um, the, ooh, the one other tournament I forgot to put in was the uh, three max. I'm doing that as well. So it's a three max. And that's 148 entries. So let's put that in first into the contest sims. Um, what are we calling that? Glo glove max? Is that what it's called? Glove save, sorry. So we're going to put in glove save. And these are the things we do in preparation for the day. Um, these don't, you don't have to change these at all once they're put in, you know, for the day. And, you know, multiple builds you could build later. And those these settings stay in. So uh, 148 people. Are going to be in that 140 entries and 25 percent for first so we'll put in 148 entries 25 percent for first and that's now set so uh let's just get started we'll take a look at the team totals here and the first thing you'll see is mm, what is the first thing you see it looks to be the highest team total at least implied by saber sim uh, it's close between Carolina, where they're a four, and Edmonton, they are close to a four. Um, and then there is a small drop to Minnesota and the Islanders. So all else being equal, you would imagine that the best plays are going to come from Edmonton, uh, Minnesota, Carolina, and the Islanders. But again, it's all price based and things like that. But it's good to get an idea of what we're looking at before we kind of move on. The other thing I like to do is look at the um, the at the other uh, times. So you have a couple of seven, seven thirties, eight, and then there's a little bit of a of a break, and you have these kind of late night hammer type games. So this Carolina game is going to be you know the one that people are either going to have to be relying on or fading. You would imagine um, towards the end of the slate. All right. Let's pull up our sheets. And again, these are usually available on the website on truedfs.com. Uh, and we're just going to take an overall look at this. Uh, I've rated these guys by sheets value score, which is a combination of both point per dollar and fantasy points. And these numbers, the fantasy points, are essentially a, an industry aggregate. Um, aggregate is kind of like the wrong word. I, maybe it is the right word because I am aggregating them, but it's not just a pure average. Uh, some of these are, huh, some sites are just weighted a little bit differently just because of confidence levels and things like that. Uh, nonetheless, I think this is probably the best estimation of what the median fantasy point projection is. Uh, and then uh, these are your ownership projections. Again, now these get a lot tighter during the day. Tighter meaning just more accurate during the day, but just to let you guys know what we're looking at. But this is the key number, the key metric, the sheets value score that kind of puts all of it together. And it's important to keep an eye on these uh, EV lines and power play lines, because obviously what we'd like to do is get guys that are rated near the top of this list that are on the same team and likewise on the same power play line. Um, so when you look at this, this some slates are easy to look at, some slates are difficult. And this one is just sort of a piece of cake, uh, you know, right off the bat. You have the top top three values are all not only all from the same team, but they're also from the same power play line. So it looks as though this is the the easy slate from a perspective of of hand build. Um, you, you play these three Minnesotas, find out who else is in the line with these guys, and then just kind of roll. Um, 
But let's look and see what else we have going on here. Um, are there any good cheapos that are rating well? Um, well, Alex Iafalo, who we remember from a couple of slates ago, he's, he's back again at 3,500. So he could either serve as a good one-off or you'll see that one of his uh, his power play mates is, is rated really high as well. So you might be able to get a two-man in with him. Or even, you look here at Gabriel Velarde, he rates pretty highly. So there's a, a nice three-man that you can play. So with, with the respect of, from a perspective of just hand-building lineups without worrying about ownership or anything like that, I mean, four Minnesotas, three Winnipegs, and, and, and away we go, easy game. Of course, it's never that easy, but when you're just staring at the sheets, it certainly looks that way. A uh, couple of other things to note, I guess. Kyle Palmieri, 4,500, relatively cheap. And then you could pair him maybe with Horvath and Brock Nelson. So that's another kind of secondary um, stack you might want to play. Oh, and here's Barzal. So Islanders, Winnipeg. Minnesota, um, and you'll see, by the way, <laughs> here's a good example. So Kaylin Addison from Minnesota, he's the defenseman, the first defenseman I found down here, and he's projected 33% ownership. I mean, I don't know if it's actually going to be that, but, uh, you know, shows to go yet, as they say. You know, this Minnesota line looks really, really tough. So let's build a lineup and uh, – and, and see just really just how easy it is to get all this in. So let's just see. So Minnesota, let's just fire them off here. So there was Eck. There was Chaprazov. I don't remember already. My, my short-term memory is already dead. Uh, Chaprazov, Zuccarello. And then the defenseman was... Um, Oh, Spurgeon is out. That's probably why all this is happening. Um, and then Addison. So these four just kind of roll. Um, let's find a goalie before we forget. And what we like to do is find the cheapest goalie that, that rates well. And lo and behold, cheapest goalie is probably the top rated goalie, which you don't get too often. So Jake Ottinger, put him in. Boy, I'll turn this into an easy slate, huh? This could be a five-second video. Jake Ottinger. Okay. So four Minnesotas, and let's make our pick. What you, you, you prefer the Islanders, or do you prefer Winnipeg? Um, doesn't make too much of a difference to me. Let's 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 try um, let's try Winnipeg. Let's see, one's easier than the other. The other uh, Winnipeg, you have uh, who did I say? There was there's Villardi you could play. There was um, the Afalo. Ooh, we're running out of wings. That's good news, at least. And then who's the other Winnipeg guy? Oh, oh Connor Iafalo. So you can't play all these guys. So we can play another Minnesota, make a five-man stack there, or pick the best Winnipeg center and make that go there. It's certainly going to be a kind of a piece of cake to do this. So let's 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 see what the Winnipeg guys look like just for the hell of it. Where's the Winnipeg center? Winnipegs have no centers. Is that, is that the story here? Um. Well, Mark Sheffley. All right. Well, or Josh Morrissey at defense. I mean, this is. Sheffley here and. Anybody at defense. But not. So um, Minnesota, Winnipeg certainly makes sense. Let's see what the Islanders look like. What did we say? Horvath, Barzal. And then again, whatever we want to do. Um, we have to pick from three three teams. So again, probably who's more about the center? Oh, it makes it even easier. So you put him in here. You could play that one off. We would say a follow or whatever, something like that. Then anybody here. So who will you play defense? 
Minnesota or Islanders. Um, we just But Noah Dobson, almost. You, you could almost do this. 800, 800, you have to find. Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty much it, you know, as far as hand-built stuff. Minnesota, Islanders, Winnipeg. Um, and if you want to mess around, who's the other, who's the defenseman for Winnipeg we talked about? Anybody? Was it? Omarcy, you can almost play him. Actually, not really. Who's the other Minnesota guy if we feel like playing with a Minnesota guy? I mean, all these guys are really cheap. Just wait and see. You find out who's on the line besides Addison and just do that or something, you know. Um, what does Broden look like, by the way? Does he uh, – This is good enough to me, right? Block some shots, shots on goal. So either Islanders, Winnipeg, Minnesota, pretty pretty easy stuff. We'll save these for now, but we'll change these later, obviously. All right, um, let's pull up Saberson and and, and let's see if uh, Saberson gives us anything different. You know, what happened to Edmonton? Why 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 am I getting no Edmonton in my uh, Wow, I don't know what to tell you. Let's see. Let's see what if, if what Saberson has to say about this. Uh, we will upload the projections directly to here. Uh, okay. And we'll build 50 lineups. And I, I wonder why hockey just kind of goes like lightning, where I say showdown football just takes forever. This whole thing will take like 30 seconds, if that. Maybe, maybe I lied. Pretty, pretty, pretty fast, right? So what we're going to do is first we're going to look at this, the regular. Wow, look at this. What a surprise. Team stacks, 94% Minnesota, 36% Islanders, 12% Winnipeg. All right. So let's do a couple of things to sure see if we can get a little different and let's run the contest simulation because what, what, what the contest simulation is supposed to do is supposed to factor in ownership and what everybody else is supposedly playing to try to leverage off of it. So if we just run it normally and you get all this Minnesota, you would think that if you run the contest sim, which is, which is set to play lineups that are highly owned according to the Sabersim ownership projections as the field, you know, uh, as the field lineup set, I would imagine that you would get much less Minnesota. Um, but we shall see. And you would imagine you would get much less Minnesota in the kick save because there's, you know, you have to beat more you know, thousands of people. Let's take a look though. Let's take a look at the first look at the kick save. That's the lottery. And we're gonna sort it by risk adjusted ROI. And even still, uh, it's jamming in all this Minnesota. Um, so what that's telling you, telling me, is that Minnesota is kind of a damn good play. Um, that's a highly analytical term. Um, Next thing I want to look at is a stack exposure. See what types of lineups they 
Okay, so this is interesting. 45% of the lineups are four threes, 30% are five twos, no full stacks, no sixes, and a whole bunch of this dreck. Okay, the, the three threes, three two twos, three three twos. So one of the things that you can do is you can you can X out the non-pure stacks if you want to. Okay. So just the way the way you do that is you just do this and you literally just Just X them out. And, and you see what's happening. It's, it's automatically taking from other lineups that it built within this set. Now, one thing I notice from doing this, doing using Sabersome a lot, it's struggling, you know what I mean, to get to what I want. It's not, you know what I mean? It really wants some of these kind of nonsense stacks. So I'm going to leave a couple of them in just for the hell of it. And the other thing I'd love to do is get away with, with two, two min uniques. Let's see if that, that really confuses everybody. No, not really. That's fine. And let's now look at the team stacks again. And it really didn't help too much uh, diversify. So this is, we're going to have to kind of make a decision of what we want to do here. But let's save it to the contest for now. And we will just make dummy lineups, right? Uh, you saw me do the other one. So let's save these to kick save, and you'll see this little thing go jiggle after I click the same contest. Okay. Now let's take a look and see what it looks like when you're pairing it to the spinorama. Um, not that different, you know. Uh, now again, I only need one lineup, so we'll just probably just take the top one here. And it looks sort of similar to um it's what I built here before. Actually, no, this is giving me Tampa. Now I have to decide whether I want to do that or not. You know, so uh, I'm going to put it, I am going to put it in for now just because I, I'm, I am changing all this later anyway. Spinorama. Now let's take a look and see what the glove save gives us. Pretty much the same. So uh this is going to be an interesting slate because i'd like to think that everybody sees what i see and if that's the case i'm going to end up getting some pretty chalky lineups but we will be updating our projections a little bit later and updating our ownership projections and we will see if anything changes uh, that will do it for now. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be back around because I'm actually playing poker today. Uh, I'm playing the WSOP online event from New Jersey. And that starts at, I think, 6, 630. So, I mean, if I get down there early enough, I will update and do a, you know, whatever. Maybe even pop on. But um, it's possible that I don't update my sheets. But it's okay because... Uh, you have Saber Sim, and also you have Goldie, who's been updating as well. And they're very, very close to mine anyway. Um, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.